Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. There's another aspect we need to look at. Surprisingly, you know, in Proverbs 23, 2, when I look at the Jeremiah 35 experience, the sons of the Rechabites, God saved them because of manners, not faith. Manners. The Bible says when Israel was to be taken into bondage, into Babylon, the Rechabites were saved. Their father gave them three instructions. Don't drink wine. Wine has nothing to do with faith. Wine enters your tummy. Faith is of the spirit. That's why they say the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. They say don't build houses. Building houses doesn't prove faith. The greatest man of faith had no house. He had no plot of land. Abraham. And what's the third instruction? Don't plant vineyards. And because of manners and etiquette, a lineage was saved. Then God is interested in manners, is interested in etiquette. In Proverbs 23, he says, you know, the Bible says he wants us to be whole. He doesn't just want you to have faith and move mountains and, you know, cast rocks into the sea, raise the dead. He wants you to be complete. That's why he said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, and I pray God that he will sanctify you, your spirit, your soul, and your body. Praise God. Hallelujah. And in Rome, and sorry, in Proverbs 23, 2, God was teaching manners in the Bible. He said, if you go before the king and they ask you to eat, and you are the kind of person that you don't know how to say no, he said, put a knife to your throat. That's the Bible. He said, if you don't have manners at home, <laughs> put a knife to your throat so that you will not go and eat and mess up things for yourself. So God is interested in your spirit. He wants your spirit saved. He wants you to make heaven. He wants your spirit to grow, which, which, which is the function of faith. He wants your soul to be matured. The Bible says Jesus in Luke chapter 2 increased in stature and increased in wisdom. The prosperity of the soul is wisdom. The Bible says it's better not to have a child than to have a foolish child. That's what the Bible said. We saw it this morning. That have a fool as a child. That it will bring grief and reproach to the family. He said, I would rather you don't have a child. So, and that God is not saying that you won't get saved. No. Reproach. Foolishness. Which is the prosperity of the soul. Prosperity of the soul is wisdom. Ability to communicate effectively, profitably, and relate with men. Faith pleases God. Wisdom relates with men. Praise God. If you have all the wisdom and you don't have faith, God will be displeased. Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, you cannot please God. So Jesus, the Bible says, was in favor with God and with man. If Jesus needed favor with man, then you need favor with man. It's not enough to say, I am walking with God. I can raise the dead. After you have raised the dead, if you don't have favor with men, you will bet to eat. Or you will need to turn stone to bread to eat. And God doesn't want you to be doing that. Praise God. And so, you must understand from the word of God that God wants the prosperity of your spirit which is compulsory, without which he cannot relate with you, which is faith. The prosperity of your soul, which is wisdom. Jesus asked the lawyer, which is the greatest commandment. And he said to Jesus, he said, to love God with all your heart and your mind and your soul and your strength is good. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus was pleased with that answer. And I notice when people talk and he's pleased with their answer, he commends them. When they talk and he's displeased, he keeps quiet. When you talk to the Lord, and when Bible says he asks Solomon, what do you want? He said, I want wisdom. And then the Bible says the Lord was pleased with his request. That's wisdom. He said, I need wisdom so that I can judge the people I write. The Lord said, I've added long life, riches, wealth, peace, for speaking right. On the cross of Calvary, two thieves were at the right and the left of Jesus. This is mannerism, not faith. 
The Bible says he was about to die. The thief on the left said, you call yourself the son of God. Save yourself and save us. That boy was not well trained in his home. And that cost him hell. Like your Bible said, yeah, okay. you are a thief. And you are accusing a man, save yourself and save us. The other one was better trained. He was just influenced wrongly stealing. So he said, sir. He said to his friend, he says, I said, ah, don't you fear God? Even in the in misbehaving, we still fear God. Nah, ah. He said, ah, Jesus, I mean, I know I'm a thief, oh, but please, when you get to that kingdom you are talking about, please remember, Jesus said, today we'll be there together. How was he saved? Manas. How does the other one not save? Mannerless. So you need manners. You need etiquette. You need compartment. You need personality development. You need to understand how to relate with God. You need to understand how to relate with men. So that you can be profitable with God and profitable with men. So, our sister started here last week Sunday with personality development, which is what I've come to talk about today which is etiquette. You'll be shocked. God is looking at it. You know, the scripture says God looks to the heart. So when he sees your heart, he will treat you right. But man doesn't look to the heart. It's like a woman that is trusting God for a life partner and says, my heart is good. You know, we're discussing about why people don't get married earlier in the day. God is not going to marry you. So your heart is not enough. It's man. A man does not look to the heart. Man looks to what he sees. So what he sees is important. And what he sees, if he dislikes, he will not extend the hand of marriage. So it's important to accustom yourself to what he sees, to align yourself for what you want. Am I communicating? Yes, Pastor. God has, God has already... Seeing your heart is great, so he has given you the opportunity. And that's what all he's going to do. That's all he's going to open you the opportunity. It's man that does not see the heart, and he does not want to see the heart. Even God says that man looks to the outward. God looks to the inward. And man is not interested in the inward. He wants to see the outward. And if he doesn't like what he sees to the outward, he'll say, Lord, I'm not interested. And he'll turn away. In developing your personality to be able to profit in life. After you have all the faith and developing your etiquette and manners, there are certain things you must put into consideration, even from the word of God. Last week when our sister was preaching, God spoke to me. He said, there's a law of first impression. There's a law of first impression. The first time a person meets you, and what you do, he leaves with a lifetime impression of you that this, who this person is. Whether right or wrong, and that's the whole view is going to hold. I was in a mass bureau meeting about 15 years ago, and there was this lady, she's an entrepreneur in the pharmaceutical industry. She's a guru. It was a seminar meeting, so we expected people to dress um, corporate. So people were dressed casual and corporate. Whether she was going to a party, I don't know. She wore one lace with stone and everything and a high heel. Of course, you know, she has guards and everything. So when she was your car, cold, mass room, we have to stop. Then when she sits, she will continue. And I said, who in the world is this woman? I didn't know her, but I took note of her face. Many years later, I saw her on the TV. I told her, I said, oh, this woman I saw in that mass room meeting that was distracting everybody. That's the first impression and the only impression I have for her. And it has stuck for 10 years and it remains. And if tomorrow I have a business with her, oh, this woman that distracts people. Let's see what is going to happen here. That's the mind I have concerning her. We've not had opportunity to interact for her to change that impression. And until that happens, that's still the impression I have for her. It can affect people's business. Even God can tell, you know, I keep saying one thing. God doesn't do magic. If God says, I'm going to bless you, it simply means it's going to open channels of blessings your way. And those blessings still have protocol they take and the expectations from your end. If one of them is missing, it will not happen. 
Praise the Lord. In developing your personality, you must understand that the way you dress is very crucial. The Bible says that when Pharaoh had his dreams and he told his magicians, I have had a dream and I don't know the interpretation. The butler said, I remember my fault today. There is a Hebrew man. He's in prison. He has the gift to interpret this. The Bible says when they went to fetch um, Joseph, they shaved him and changed all his garments. You can't stand before Pharaoh like this. If you do and you answer the question well, you will not have favor before him. So what he will do, he will just grant you freedom. You may not sit on that throne. He may look at you that this refract, this refract can't sit on that throne. And it has cost people the throne because of dress. Nobody is saying to dress to the kill. But dressings are appropriate. And you must understand they are a function of wisdom. You try and go for a bank interview and wear a badge and let's see what will happen. Whether they will answer you. You know better that you don't dress that way. Wear lace, transparent. Wear gele. I heal. When they say come for the interview, let your girl be kako, ka, and kako. Go then go and say you do interview. And let's see how you return and say you have faith. I can assure you, you'll be the first person they'll tear the sheets and throw into the dustbin because of dress. The Bible says when the queen of Sheba came to Israel, she noticed three things about Solomon, which are a display of wisdom. The way he dressed and his attendance, the way he ate and the manner by which he answered her questions with ease. So your dress code is a reflection of your wisdom. If you dress wrongly, it shows you probably don't have appropriate wisdom. On the next first impression, by your dressing, you can be assessed as being neat. Oh, that guy's neat. Why? The way he dressed. That guy's rough. Why? The way he dressed. I remember once I met somebody and I was going to say, why did you introduce me to that clown? I called him and said, why? Because of the way he dressed. Red, orange, and blue, something else. I said, in my words, clown will love you, you know. <laughs> Praise Jesus. <laughs> That's what you call somebody that dresses like that. If it's an entertainment introduction, maybe you condone it and take it. If it's a corporate induction, you call him a clown. Why? Because of the way he's dressed. Your dressing can reflect you as being decent. Oh, that's a decent lady. That doesn't mean you are decent. That dress is giving them a first impression about you. That's a de- someone said that one said she's decent. Then your first impression about your dressing, oh, that lady is loose, my God. Look, let me ask you one question. You, you are not married, a guy wants to marry you, then takes you to go and meet his mother. Wear see-through. Let your cleavage see from here. Wear short mini. You think you'll marry that guy? You may be the best-mannered woman on earth. That first impression. Say, what did you bring? Like they say, kill a boy. Kill a lady. Now, you are decent. You are even probably a virgin. You are nice. You are hardworking. That first impression, she's rejected you instantly. And you know that. And then God said, that's your husband. Then the war you don't need, you start by faith, she must die. God said, no, she has long life. She can't die by faith. She's not going to die anywhere. She has long life. I say, I for her to do. She's hindering my marrying the man God. No, your dress code is hindering it, not her. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. By your first, by your dressing and the first impression, you can look at you and call you dirty. Ah, that guy's dirty. That doesn't mean you are dirty. Or you are creating a first impression, which if another opportunity does not come to change, it will stick and that's all they'll believe about you. And so God says, dress appropriately. Am I communicating? When Esther appeared before the king, she was well dressed. She didn't just dress anymore. Do you know that I've, been, I've gone to a function and I saw the way somebody there said, and I said, that guy's lousy. Why? I saw with three chains on his neck. He had a bang. I said, ah, what kind of lousy guy is that? Now, that doesn't mean he's lousy. That dress is said, okay, you two meet a guy for the first time. 
three chains on the neck, three bangles on the hand, four rings on the hand, probably one chain on the leg again. I know it's women that wear chains. What will you say of the person? What will you say? If, if you are single, if you are a mature person, and you want to treat your husband, say, this guy, the first thing you are switched off. Am I correct? Why is the dress? And it can hinder the work of God. So God says, take note of your dress code because it can enhance or it can hinder the work of God. It is involved in your personality. It tells people who you are, not necessarily who you really are, but it tells people who you they believe you are based on that dress. Whether true or false, you have wrongly created an impression of yourself which may deny you some blessings that God has prepared for that person. And so, it's important you have the right requisite wisdom. If you don't know how to dress vocation, go and learn. They told Jesus, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. Prayer is a skill. Nobody is born to know how to pray. Did you see somebody came and born, say, Jesus, I bless you in the name of the Father. Have you ever heard of it? Even with little children, they don't say prayer. They say mama, baba. You teach them to pray. So learn the etiquette of dressing. It is part of the prosperity of the body. Jesus said truly, life is more than clothes. Life is more than food. Life is more than drink. Meaning, that is not all that life is, but it is part of of what life is. Amen. Amen. In developing your personality, I always have a policy, which is um, any field you are in, and that's why in medicine, you find out that there's a general practitioner, and you always see that is that quest in all of them to either become resident or go into masters, or go into specialization. And even in the specialization, they keep adding knowledge. I, keep, I was told, and that's, I believe, from the scripture, it's only the dead that don't increase in knowledge. Only the dead that don't add knowledge. The law of addition of knowledge. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says that add to your faith. So if you have all the faith in the world, virtue, and then to your virtue, Add knowledge. To your virtue, add knowledge. Now, what kind of knowledge is he talking about? The knowledge he's talking about is, if you go to Philemon chapter 1, verse 6, there's just one chapter in the book of Philemon. It says that your faith is more effective. Philemon, put it up, please. Philemon, verse 6. He said, the communication of your faith, now this is faith, is more effective by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in thee. Meaning, to booster your faith, you must know the skills and the talents that you have. If the Lord tells you, I'm anointing you for, let me find an ailment, for example. Let, let's even go very spiritual. Because I don't want to sound, they say I'm, I may sound too motivational and kind of, let me go a little bit more spiritual. Let's say the Lord anoints you and says, I've anointed you. He says, on the health ground, I've anointed you to minister the blessings of the fruit of the womb. And from now on, when you speak to anyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb, they shall receive. That is faith. Now God says, add to your faith virtue. Attempt it and see and make sure it works. To that virtue, add knowledge. What knowledge? There's no other knowledge in the word of God about the fruit of the womb. So where are you going to get the knowledge from? From science. In order to make your faith more effective, develop that anointing by adding natural knowledge to enhance it. And that's why I have a policy, no matter what skill you have, I always give 10-year window. If you have not added additional knowledge, I might not relate with you again. It's my policy. If you're a tailor 
and you have started learning tailoring, in 10 years, I expect you to have added pattern designing. And another 10 years, that's max, max, max. It doesn't have to be 10 years. Another 10 years, I expect you to understand certain things about clothes. You can even expand to selling materials. I didn't say you should go and start pharmacy. Multiple streams of income to me is not just diverse forms of income, but a spread of skill, a widening of skill, and an enhancement of skill by going into knowledge of all contemporary issues that enhance that skill. Meaning, if I'm a cameraman, there's nothing wrong is also be a sound person because everything is related. If I'm, a, if I'm a caterer, there's nothing wrong in also selling food. It's related. And add knowledge. It develops your personality. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Proverbs 24, 5. Are you getting blessed? It says, a wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge will increase strength. So to increase your strength, which is your personality, you must add knowledge. Praise God. If I were a medical doctor and I have a hospital, I would probably add some knowledge of lab issues. And another five years, I've added a laboratory. I'm increasing. I'm expanding. Another five years, I've added a... Um, a scanning section. In another five years, I've added a pharmacy. Yes, I'm not a pharmacist. I can get a pharmacist there, but they're all interrelated. I'm expanding, but in the core of my skill, it makes your faith more effective. That's what Philemon is saying. Am I communicating? Proverbs 9.9. 9. Give instruction to a wise man, he will yet be wiser. Teach a just man, it will increase in what? Learning. Add knowledge and develop your personality by adding knowledge. Praise the Lord. It's part of the prosperity of the flesh. And it's part of what God usually uses to expand and increase people. Praise the Lord. There is no well-developed personality without proper time management. And I have a, um, do I call it a table? Or I have a chart which I use to relate time management. Let's assume somebody lives for 75 years. You live for 75 years. That's putting it at 24 hours a day, 75 years relating to 12, 24 hours a day. Now, if you sleep eight hours, which is recommended in a day, it means you have slept for 25 years. I'm communicating. If you put 75 years, let's say someone lives for 75 years, and then you look at your routine a day, which is 24 hours. Now you sleep eight hours a day, which is one third of 24 hours, right? Now if you calculate that in 75 years, it means you have slept for 25 years. So sleep has taken 25 years of a man's life. It remains 50 years. We want to see how you can make impacts in life. And these are why those who manage time effectively develop well and make it in life. Time is a great factor of prosperity. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says for everything there is a time. Now in 50 years, let's assume you went to school, you're an average student. Maybe a genius graduated at 19, but let's say you, well, you know, did training, graduated 21, did NYC, did a master's, you finish everything at 25. Another eight hours a day has gone. So you have taken training 25 years. It remains 25 years. I want to see time management. You have slept for 25 years out of 75. You have trained for 25 years out of 25. You now have 25 years now to make your impact and excel in family, excel in career, excel in ministry. It's just 25 years. Out of 75, out of that 70, uh, 25 left, let's give room for miscellaneous. Wedding, family, some journeys you didn't need to take. You went to do this work, wasn't well. You came back. You traveled abroad. You tried to go and work. You came back. Let's take another 5, 10 years. 
you just have about 15 years left to make your impact. If we put it in a day, out of that eight hours remaining, we take about two hours left. You just have four hours a day to make impact in this life. Four hours a day to make impact in life, if we calculate it that way. Now, those four hours, if what you use it to is to gist and gossip, you know that person is going nowhere. Because it's just four hours you have. Just four hours. Am I communicating? So you must manage time effectively. And you must manage time in line with goals, which also includes knowledge. In lines with your goals and your dreams. That's why they ask you when you are young, what would you like to be in life? Say, doctor, then you, must, you know that you must take note of sciences. Don't tell me you want to be a doctor. Then you are studying uh, Yoruba and you are studying Igbo. No, you, you, you're, not, you're not adding the right knowledge. And so you must manage time effectively. Jesus said, there are how many hours in a day when a man ought to walk? For night cometh when a man cannot walk again. So those four hours, at least every day of your life, you must ask yourself a question. My four hours of yesterday, what did I achieve with it? That is a person developing. And that's a person moving towards goals and actualization of dreams in life. You must manage time effectively. In that four hours, you will need to pray. In that four hours, you will need to eat. In that four hours, you need to relate with people. And in those four hours, you need to plan your life ahead of time. So there isn't much time in the race of it. That's why James says that the man's life is like vapor that appears briefly and disappears. There's no time. So in developing your personality, you manage your time effectively. And the best way to manage it, say to yourself, I have four hours today to make a mark. If it's your book, just take two, three hours and make sure you develop that book. Then you can watch TV. You can play with people. The time is allotted for that. Praise God. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.